I always wanted to build my own tiny house. So in 2021, I did just that. And despite years of research over thousands of decisions, we still made some mistakes in the build that were absolutely avoidable if we just knew what we didn't know before we got started. So I decided that I'm gonna to put together a series with all the decisions that we made along the road, things that we would have done differently, things that we made that were absolutely the right decision, and what led to those decisions so that you can make sure that you make the right decisions for you when you're building your tiny house. So stick around, because today we're gonna to get detailed, we're gonna get nuanced, and we're gonna go into all the information that's available about tiny house trailers. DIYing our tiny house on wheels from our own design was one of the greatest accomplishments that I honestly think that I'll have in my entire life. When I was doing research, I'd spent months and months looking at types of trailers. I even took a tiny house class with tiny home builders out of Atlanta before we finally made the decision to order our trailer and go all in on our build. Just because that trailer was the right fit for us doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right trailers for you. So I'm going to go into detail on the three types of trailers that tiny houses are generally built on, the pros and cons of each type of trailer, where they fall on the price scale from least expensive to most expensive, and some of the details to help make the decision. So when it comes time to buy that trailer to get started with your tiny build, you make the right choice for you. To get started, we're gonna start with the most inexpensive of the trailers. And the most basic trailer, probably the trailer that most people think about when they think about building on a tiny house trailer. And that is the traditional bumper pull trailer. To show you an example, I'm gonna use a trailer made by one of the leading manufacturers for tiny house trailers, TrailerMade. The first benefit is at the front of the trailer where the tongue is located. The format of this tongue allows a great space to add an accessory such as a mini split air condenser or even a storage shed that goes on the front of the house that you can access from the outside. The next benefit is getting the full height on the entire trailer. With a bumper pull trailer, the deck is right around two foot. So with a 13 foot six legal street limit, that leaves you over 11 foot of building height that you can use for the entire length of the trailer. As I stated, this is the least expensive trailer as it is the most basic and most commonly built trailer on the market. But the main benefit that I think that any bumper pull trailer has is the ability to be towed by any vehicle with a traditional hitch. This can really come in handy if you find that you have to move quickly or your vehicle is in the shop and you need to find a friend or a service that can tow it to a no location for you. There's no special equipment required, so you can just hook up and move on right down the road. One of the main downsides of a traditional bumper pull trailer is that you're going to have two options of working around these wheel wells. You can either build up and box these in so that you have to deal with either custom building cabinets or coming up with a creative way to, to work around this butting into your trailer. Or uh, I've seen people who build up their subfloor to the same height which is losing quite a bit of height in exchange to have some storage or some uh, plumbing room underneath the floor that's not exposed to the elements underneath the trailer. The other important item to note that a traditional bumper pull trailer may have is an enhanced ability to sway over what you would notice on a fifth wheel or gooseneck trailer type. The second type of trailer that I want to show you guys is called the deck over trailer. Now this type of trailer is very similar to the bumper pull trailer in that you can hook it up to basically any vehicle. Uh, but the big difference that you get is the height uh, of the actual bed as opposed to the axle. So you don't have any of the wheel well rising up into the base platform so you don't have to work around any of those wheel wells as you're going. So this type of trailer has a lot of the benefits of a traditional bumper pull in that you can just call a friend with a truck, they can move it for you as long as it's a powerful enough truck, but this has the benefit 
of additionally being able to work with a flat surface on the base without having to work around any wheel wells. The main downside is that you do lose a little bit of height off of the entire trailer because the height that the trailer has from the ground to the trailer is going to be a little bit taller because it has to raise entirely above the wheel well. So you do lose a little bit of height when you start building. So you may have about 10 to 12 inches of less height that you can build up until you hit the 13 foot six that you would not have uh, that limitation on a traditional bumper pool where you just have to work around the wheel wells. To counterbalance the deck starting at a higher level is something that a lot of people didn't think about. I know I certainly didn't, but that is the amount of space that you can use underneath the trailer for things such as uh, tanks and battery storage. So with a deck over trailer, you're getting about 10 more inches that you can work with underneath the trailer to store those things, get your RV dump tanks at a higher level so, so that you don't have to worry about an RV park or a, even a permanent park where the sewer outlet is sticking out of the ground a little bit. Chances are on a deck over trailer, you're looking at a higher tank, which will continue to allow your uh, something to flow downhill still. Really the only downside that a deck over trailer has that a traditional bumper puller doesn't is the height that we've talked about already and they are just a little bit more expensive. Uh, whereas the chart that I have for a 18, th or 18 foot 10,000 pound bumper pool is right around 5290. Uh, the deck over trailers that I'm seeing already built uh, run right about 5,800 to 6,000. So there is a little bit of a price difference of, what is that, about 10% that the deck over is going to cost over top of a traditional bumper pull trailer. The last type of trailer, and the one that we decided to go with, is the gooseneck or fifth wheel trailer. This type of trailer is known for the ability to haul smoothly due to the fact that the trailer is actually over top of the bed of the truck. So a lot of the weight is carried down through that central axle between the truck and the trailer. The idea behind our tiny house build was to treat it basically like an RV. So we planned on moving every two weeks to a month for several years. So for that purpose, moving the house was extremely important to us. So we decided to go with the gooseneck trailer. Uh, we got a 32 foot total uh, size of trailer, which means that 24 feet is the lower traditional trailer height, and then 8 foot is the, over the gooseneck area that goes into the bed of the truck. One thing that we had to take into careful consideration is the height that the neck of the gooseneck trailer was going to be at, because we really wanted myself, a six foot tall person, to be able to stand up in the gooseneck loft area. So to do that, we had to make sure that the six foot, the ceiling, and the roof height were subtracted from the 13 foot six road requirement to get the total height that we wanted the neck to be welded to the regular trailer. So this was very much a custom build that you wouldn't find just off the shelf. Now due to the road stability and the ability to build for the full length of the trailer as long as the height of the neck is correct, uh, I'm a big proponent of the gooseneck trailers. However, there are several downsides to the trailer that the gooseneck just doesn't quite stand up to the bumper pull trailer. The first item that I think is probably most prominent is that it does require a specialized hitch. The gooseneck is a ball type where a ball goes into the bed of your trailer and then a pipe from the trailer goes down over that and allows for the movement of the trailer as you're driving down the road while giving you a very steady towing of the trailer. Now, fifth wheel hitches are a little bit different 
On a fifth wheel hitch, you have a ball on the trailer and a specialized hitch that takes up almost the entire back of most trucks. And it allows for a very quick and easy disconnect at the sacrifice of losing the entire bed of the trailer. Another downside of this particular type of hitch is that they're fairly expensive. Uh, we bought our truck new and the additional, uh, just the ball and the uh, chain mounts for towing the gooseneck style that we have was $1,000 from the vendor. Uh, that was just for the ball and two of the anchors that quickly remove in and out of the bed of the trailer that allow us to have the full access to the bed rather quickly if we choose to. On the other hand, uh, fifth wheel trailer hitches can be quite a bit more expensive. Uh, I've seen some that with installation can run you between $800 and $1,000. Uh, and I've seen some that really cut down on uh, the road bounce and what you feel in the house and the trailer. And those can cost upwards of two to $3,000 for installation. And then your uh, trailer bed is completely eaten up by that hitch mount. Another item to take into consideration is that gooseneck trailers have an additional, usually two jack stands at the front that are used to remove the trailer from the bed of the truck. When I purchased my trailer custom, it came with a bar that connected this trailer jack to this trailer jack, which extended out through the trailer and to a hand crank over here on the far side. Now that worked pretty well for when we were just starting out and there was no weight on the trailer. But as the trailer got closer and closer to its 14,000 pound limit, it became significantly harder and harder to crank that up and down, even the littlest bit. Hand cranking the trailer high enough to get it onto the hitch in the bed of the truck was about a three hour ordeal to crank it up and then drop it back down. It was not very fast at all. So the first thing that we did was to buy one of these electric jacks. Uh, this one here is a Bulldog brand bought from eTrailers.com. It cost about $600 and required a welded piece to be put right on down here to the trailer jack and then wiring run up so that these switches up here can control the uh, up and down uh, lift of the trailer. Now this particular jack is rated for about 12,000 pounds so I originally thought that one would work to just lift up the front and back of this trailer but I was I was incorrect. Uh, it was able to do it but it would still take about an hour, hour and a half uh, and it would blow the fuse that's built in to the motor almost every three minutes, I would say. So we had to purchase a second one to go on the second trailer jack that would allow us to lift it. And now that those two items are installed, it takes about 15 minutes to get it completely hooked up from where it's basically touching the ground at the front. So while this seems like a very obvious addition, it was 1200 additional dollars, plus I had to buy a welder to put that on. So you may need to pur purchase a welder or have someone come and weld it on for you onto each of the trailer jacks just to be able to get the trailer hitch up and down into the truck bed. So I know that was a lot of information, so let's just do a quick recap. So three types of trailers, bumper pull, deck over, and gooseneck slash fifth wheel. For the bumper pull trailer, you're going to have the full use of the full height for the entire length of the trailer, fairly inexpensive price, and ease of transport or finding additional transport if needed. While the only real downsides are having to work around the wheel wells and losing the stability that a gooseneck gives you. So if you're not looking to move your trailer ever or maybe once a year bumper pull i think in my mind at least makes the most sense for that type of tiny house build 
deck over has all the benefits of a bumper pull trailer while removing the negative bit of having to work around a wheel well. It's a very small price difference, right around 10% from the bumper pull trailer, while giving you the ease of transport and the added height underneath the trailer. So if you're able to find a good deal on a deck over and you don't want to worry about the uh, working around the wheel wells, a deck over trailer and a bumper pull trailer are right about the same for me. I like the idea of the additional space on the, under the deck over and it's worth $500 in my mind for that, that added benefit. However, if you are thinking about moving your tiny house three to four times a year or even weekly to two weekly like we do in our tiny house, I cannot express how much of the travel benefit the gooseneck trailer gets versus the bumper pull. Uh, the increased price, the uh, losing the height at the front that goes over the, the truck bed, uh, that is 100% all worth it for me. For the ease of mind, traveling down the highway at 65 miles an hour to have that stability and you really feel it as you're driving down the road, especially with a dually truck that's going to help carry that weight. So while I am a very large proponent of the gooseneck, specifically for our needs with moving consistently, there's pretty significant downsides for people who aren't going to move frequently. With a bumper pull or a deck over trailer, for all of the 32 feet that I take up on the ground, you are able to get the full 13 foot 6 height from the ground. Whereas with a gooseneck trailer, uh, you lose, I'm going to say four and a half to six foot, depending on how it is, off of that total height that you get. So you notice that little bit of a difference in that area. The other some very significant change between a bumper pool and a deck over in the five to $6,000 range for an 18 foot is that uh, our 32 foot trailer, which obviously significantly larger, but is considered a 24 foot trailer. So compare that to the chart uh, of the bumper pool trailer. Our trailer delivered from Florida after being custom built was just over $9,000. Once you add in the trailer jacks at $1,200, you're over $10,000 into this trailer that a 24-foot is less than $7,000. So it is a significantly larger increase for that ability to have the travel stability. So hopefully that's enough information to at least choose the type of trailer you want. Unfortunately, that's not all the thought process that has to go into choosing a trailer. I would say we're about halfway there, because now that you've chosen the type of trailer you want, you're going to have to decide what type of trailer axle you're looking for. The two main type of axles that you're probably going to be looking at, even on a custom build trailer, is a leaf spring axle or a torsion axle. And they have a couple differences, benefits, and of course, cost differences between the two. So let's start with the less expensive option again, with the leaf spring trailer axle. This is going to be the most common type of axle that you see on most trailers. Uh, it has a leaf spring that helps carry the weight and kind of give a shock absorption that carries down into the trailer. The tr if you have tandem or... Uh, triple axles, there are weight distribution hubs that help to carry the weight a little more evenly between all three of the axles. This type of axle also requires the least amount of maintenance. Uh, periodically uh, greasing the uh, wheel bearing hubs and just periodically checking to make sure that there's no terrible rust or any damage to the axle. Besides that, there's very little maintenance that's needed uh, on a normal use of, an, of a leaf spring axle. Just looking at replacement costs of a 7K leaf spring axle, I was able to find one on eTrailers.com for about $799. So that is the low end of axles uh, for a trailer decision. The second type of trailer axle that you may want to consider is called a torsion axle. 
the torsion axle works a little bit different than the leaf spring on a torsion axle instead of having the leaf spring it actually has an additional arm that moves up and down to uh, take away some of that road violence from your trailer this leads to a smoother ride with a slight uh, degradation in weight that they can carry this isn't a huge deal for a typical uh, 14,000 to 16,000 pound trailer because 7 to 8,000 pound torsion axles are fairly common. Now a downside of a torsion axle is that the axles aren't tied together to help distribute that weight between two or three axles. They're each weight bearing on their own. So if you are not able to put a lot of thought into the distribution of the weight inside of your tiny house, this can cause one of your axles to be overloaded while the other doesn't carry the full weight. So while your trailer may only weigh 14,000 pounds, if you don't do the weight distribution correctly, you may have 9,000 pounds on an 8,000 pound axle going down the road. That could lead to a bad day. So the cost difference is a decent amount. A Dexter torsion trailer in the seven to seven thousand pound rating is right about twelve hundred dollars so a fairly large what is that eighty percent increase in the cost to get the benefit of a smoother ride with the negative of additional maintenance that you may not need on a leaf spring system unfortunately for us this wasn't one of the things that we didn't know that we didn't know when we were designing this trailer. So our tiny house is created with the leaf spring traditional axle. Uh, this leads to a fairly bumpy ride on some of the roads that we've come across. So we do come inside to a lot of displacement. Whereas if we would have known about torsion axles, we would have paid the extra up front to have those torsion axles installed. Uh, that would have been worth it for the amount that we move. Again, if you're only looking to move your, your trailer once, maybe twice ever, traditional leaf spring axles are gonna be just fine for you. But if you are thinking about moving fairly regularly, then a torsion spring upgrade uh, may be worth really looking into for what you're looking at. The last thing that I want to mention about trailers that never even crossed my mind when we started building this is how different trailer tires are versus a traditional car tire. Obviously a trailer tire is designed to carry a lot more weight than a traditional vehicle tire. So there's actually ratings of tires that you may want to consider looking into. Uh, our tiny house, since it was 14,000 pounds, came with an E-rated tire that was rated for 3,250 pounds. Balance that out, that gets us 6,500 pounds on each axle for the tire rating, but a trailer that's rated at 14,000 pounds. So when we were nearing that 14,000 pound weight limit, we were overweight on our tires. So what do we do in that scenario? Well, we went and we looked at other types of tires and we found F-rated LT uh, trailer tires that are rated up to 3,750 pounds. And instead of holding the 80 PSI that our E-rated uh, trailers hold or trailer tires hold, the F are 110 and they can hold up to the 3750, which gives us over the rating of the axle that can be carried by our tires. So it gave us that peace of mind that uh, we could have saved the additional cost of buying E-rated e tires and then going and buying F-rated tires after the fact if we would have just known about that tire difference at the beginning and been able to just upgrade at the very beginning. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, building this tiny house was absolutely one of the greatest accomplishments that I'll likely ever have in my life. 
I absolutely loved it. I know that this was a lot of information, and I hope that it doesn't discourage anyone from building a tiny house. If you have any questions or you think of anything that I should add into this video that I can add to the notes, please reach out and let me know. I want to make sure that this information is robust and as helpful as possible. So please comment down below. Let me know if I answered any of your questions or if there's anything that you would like to know the answer to. Uh, in my mind, there's no benefit to having knowledge if you don't share it with other people. So I absolutely would love to help you out if you have any questions. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I plan on doing a series about all of the different decisions that we made along the way. So if that's something that you're interested in and I didn't bore you with too much detail, make sure to click that subscribe button so that you get notified when I put up any of the future videos. If you want to look at some of the terrible videos that I've made in the past, I'll go ahead and link one up here in the top so that you can go check out my other videos. I really appreciate you sticking around till the end and I hope to see you in the next video.